So today we will uh, discuss the photoelectric effect, which is originally uh, discovered by the Heinrich Hertz in 1887. He's a German physicist, and later on in 1905, Einstein uh, proposes his theory of a photoelectric effect using Planck's idea of electromagnetic wave consisting of quanta. So basically, uh, the experimental observations which the Henry Hertz ha has gone through for the photoelectric effect uh, were not been uh, explained on the basis of the classical understanding of the electromagnetic radiations or the wave theory and then the Planck's came with an idea of uh, the quantization of the electromagnetic wave in order to explain uh, the black body radiation and the later on Einstein uses uh, the Planck's idea in order to explain the experimental observations of the photoelectric effect. So what is a photoelectric effect? Uh, uh, you must have gone through uh, in class 12th. So the photoelectric effect occurs when the light, like when I say light, uh, I'm talking about the visible spectrum and basically when incident on certain type of metallic surface. Not all metallic surfaces are going to have a photoelectric effect. So when a light falls on a certain metallic surface, it causes the electrons of that metallic surface, that electrons which are inside the atoms revolving, those electrons are emitted from the metallic surface. So when the light or most probable uh, emission of the electron is uh, we can see in the visible region or the ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So when such kind of light even x-ray are also uh, responsible for the photoelectric effect. So when such uh, light incidence or light say I can say electromagnetic radiation incident on the certain metallic surface causes the electrons to be emitted from the surface. So this phenomena uh, is known as the photoelectric effect where the emission of electron took place from the surface of a certain type of metallic uh, certain type of metal uh, when uh, some electromagnetic radiation falls on the metallic surface and the electrons which are emitted are called the photoelectrons photoelectrons so these electrons are no different than the electron which are revolving uh, around the nucleus in an atom they are named photoelectron because the electrons are being emitted by the emission by the, the uh, when the photon is uh, incident on the metallic surface so that's why a photoelectrons when the light means photo is light is uh, being uh, projected or shining on the metallic surface and the electrons are being emitted from that metallic surface so the photoelectron is the name of the electrons which are being emitted from the metallic surface so now you know that a photoelectric effect is uh, the phenomena in which the electrons from a certain type of metallic surface are being emitted when a certain type of light incident on that metallic surface and those electrons are known as the photoelectrons. So um, now let's move uh, to uh, the picture of uh, like you see that this is uh, a nucleus and this these are the if you know that is the orbitals s orbital p orbital or shell k l m shell and electrons are evolving in these shells and, and a photon or the light incident and it is strike an electron and then electrons comes out from the atom okay so any metallic surface is made up of such kind of atoms and if uh, light falls on the surface of the metal the electrons from one of the atom of the metal surface interact with that photon and the electrons comes out from the surface and this phenomena is known as the photoelectric effect. The experimental setup uh, for uh, the photoelectric effect is you can see that this this is a tube 
which is evacuated means vacuum is inside the tube there is nothing is there evacuated and it's a quartz tube and we have a potential applied a positive potential in this side negative potential on this side and this is applied by this potential divider okay and there is an ammeter to measure the current and it's a, a voltmeter V which will measure the potential which are being applied uh, between these two terminals so this is a, a pictorial uh, representation of the experiment for the photoelectric effect okay so what happens that we applied certain voltage to these terminals and a light shines on this grid and this grid is on this grid we have a metallic this surface is coated with certain type of metal and then the light falls on that metal electrons comes out from this surface and these electron reaches to this terminal and when electron flows we get a current in the ammeter so now one thing you can notice that this is a positive potential and this is negative potential okay so the electron which is uh, the electron which are coming from the metallic surface because you know electron is uh, having a negative charge so this negative charge and this negative charge will repel each other and this positive charge and this negative charge will attract each other so how this electron is moving toward this uh, negative potential unless and until this electron reaches to this negative terminal then only we can get the current but in a photoelectric effect we are getting a current so that means that the electron which are coming out from the surface is having the kinetic energy more than the potential between these two terminals so this electron is having a kinetic energy more than enough to overcome the potential between these two then only this electron reaches to this terminal and then we get a current so if if if, we, if i increase the potential of this terminal then what will happen that if i keep on increasing then there will be a time then electrons will come out from the surface but they will not have the kinetic energy in to overcome the potential between this and these electron will no more reach to this terminal and there will be no current so the potential at which the electron are not being electrons will not reach to this so the potential at which the electron will not reach to this terminal and the current will be zero so that particular potential is is represented as is represented at v naught and this is known as the stopping potential we'll 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 talk about this this is known as the stopping potential okay so this stopping potential is basically the pot potential at which the no electrons which are being emitted from the metallic surface are not reaching to the terminal and the current goes to zero in the photoelectric effect so this is uh, the explanation of uh, the photoelectric effect how, how the photoelectric effect is happening and we are getting a current in the ammeter so now uh, how to explain this phenomena why this is happening why when the light is shining on the metallic surface then why the electrons are coming out from this metallic surface so people thought that it's not a big deal we have the physics about this so the classically uh, we know that the light which is falling on the surface is a wave and the wave carry energies it's fine and then when it falls on the metallic surface so when the light is falling on the metallic surface which is carrying the energy and some of the energy is absorbed by the metal okay and may somehow concentrate on the individual electron and reappears as the kinetic energy so uh, classically what we think when this light which is a wave is coming and shining on the metallic surface then the energy carried by this wave which is this light is somehow absorbed by this electron and this when the, uh, the energy 
is more than the binding energy of this electron. The binding energy uh, is the energy with which this electron is being binded to this shell. When the, the energy uh, given by this wave uh, or abs is absorbed to this electron is more than the binding energy, then this electron then this electron is free and it comes out of the atom. So it's fine. It's fine. It's, it, there is no problem in explaining why the light is shining on the metallic surface or why the, how, how the electrons are coming out from the metallic surface. So classically it's very it's very easy to explain that the wave carry energy and energy is being somehow absorbed by the metal and individual electron and the energy which is being absorbed by the electron and if the extra energy uh, with the binding energy then then the binding energy it appears as the kinetic energy of this electron but the experimental findings we will see later on shows that no such simple explanation is possible that we that classically what we are thinking is that the wave carry energy and uh, this is what is happening in, with the electron and this is not so simple the different features the experimental observation about the photoelectric effect uh, which were not easy to explain on the classical understanding of the wave. So the first feature of the photoelectric effect is about the time interval between incidence of light and the injection of photoelectrons. So uh, classically uh, what we can think of is that so if we have a low intensity light which is falling on the metallic surface so a measurable time interval should pass between the incident instant of light is turned on and the time an electron is ejected from the metal that means classically we can think of that when the light is falling on the metallic surface then it must get some time in order to absorb the energy and then the emission of electron okay and that time interval is required for electron to absorb the incident radiation which is falling before it acquires enough energy more than its uh, binding energy and to escape from the metal okay and why 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 is that because the energy in an electromagnetic wave so wave which is falling on the metallic surface it it has a wave front the wave which is falling on the metallic surface it has a wave front like and each point on the wave front is having exact amount of energy and this if you say the uh, your wave is uh, has certain energy the the energy is distributed equally on the wave front so if this wave is falling on the metallic surface then the electron uh, el electron m must get some time to absorb this energy and then this energy uh, is more than the binding energy then only that electron can come out from the metallic surface so there must be a time interval between the light is falling on the metallic surface and the ejection of the electron okay but experimentally uh, what has been found is that the electrons are emitted almost instantaneously even at the low light intensity that means there is no delay that means the moment the light falls on the metallic surface uh, and the same moment the electron are being emitted from the metallic surface there is no time delay there is no clock to which we can measure the time interval between the falling of the light on the metallic surface and the emission of the electron okay but classically what we can think of that there must be a time interval that when the light is falling on the surface there must be a time interval in order to electron to absorb energy and when the energy is more than the binding energy then only can electron get out from the atom but experimentally there is no delay so classically what we can think of is not explaining 
the almost instantaneous emission of the electron from the metallic surface. Okay. This is one feature of the photoelectric effect which we cannot explain on the classical understanding of the wave theory when we consider electromagnetic radiation as a wave. The second feature of uh, the photoelectric effect is that the kinetic energy of the photoelectron. Okay, so kinetic energy of the photoelectron are independent of the light intensity. So light in when we talk about the light intensity, in intensity of the light we can think of that uh, the brightness. Okay. Okay, so when I say the light intensity, classically what we can think of as the light intensity as the brightness of the light. So how the kinetic energy of the photoelectron are independent of the light intensity? We can see from this figure that you can see from here that on this x-axis we have the photoelectron current. The current uh, which are due to the electrons which are coming from the metallic surface. On this side we have the retarding potential. You can see V0 we think talk about the V0. V0 is the stopping potential at which the current goes to zero. Okay, so the current is going to zero. The current is going to zero. Huh? So x axis is retarding potential. Here the frequency, frequency denoted by nu is constant. So the light which are which is falling on the surface, whose frequency is constant. Okay, but what I am changing is the intensity. Intensity i, i is representing the intensity. I mean I have increased the intensity i to two i and 2i to 3i. Then increasing intensity means I am increasing the brightness of the light which is falling on the surface. So when a certain brightness, uh, light with a certain brightness, i brightness is falling on the surface, so some photoelectron current, the amount of current is this, okay, okay, and then when I increase the brightness, the current increases, if I increase the brightness, the current increases, okay. So naturally, in when I increasing the current when the current is being increased that means the number of electrons which are coming with this light with this light and with this light are more than so the number of photoelectron which are coming out of metallic surface with this brightness is less than this in this case the more electrons are coming there were the more elect more current is there uh, if I increase the brightness more electrons are coming so we have uh, we have uh, more current but what is interesting is that the number of electrons are being increased when I am increasing the intensity. But what is happening, the current for the potential, the current goes to zero at the same point. That means whatever the number of electrons which are coming out from the metallic surface, kinetic energy are same because V0 is directly proportional, V0 is directly proportional to the kinetic kinetic energy of the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons. So what I told you that V0 is the potential at which the electrons which are coming from the metallic surface are not having enough kinetic energy to come to the negative terminal. So this is positive terminal and this is negative terminal. So electron which is coming from here, okay, so it's, these electrons are not having enough energy to overcome this potential V0. So this V0 is the maximum kinetic energy an electron which are coming from the metallic surface can have. So in this case, this case the maximum kinetic energy is this this case also is this, this case also is this. So I am increasing the intensity. By increasing the intensity or increasing the brightness, the number of electrons are increasing. But those electrons which are coming from the metallic surface all have the same kinetic energy. So that is why the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons are independent of the light intensity. That means no matter I increase the intensity, the kinetic energy of all the electrons are same for all these binding energy, or all these brightness, okay? But what, can we classically explain this phenomena? 
this is experimental observation but classically what, what we can think of that the electromagnetic theory of light predicts that the more intense the light that the more bright the light the greater the energy of the electron should be if I the more bright is light the electron which are coming from the metallic surface must have a kind of more kinetic energy than the lesser bright light this is what we can think classically because the electron should absorb energy continually from the electromagnetic wave so as the light intensity incident of the metal is increased means if the brightness increase the electron should be ejected with more kinetic energy this is what we can think classically but the experimentally what we are observing that increasing the brightness is not increasing the kinetic energy all these electrons are having the same kinetic energy so what is happening but increasing the brightness is increasing the number of electrons but not the kinetic energy of the electrons okay so what is this is what we experimental result we found the maximum kinetic energy is independent of the light intensity if i increase the intensity the kinetic energy is independent the maximum kinetic energy is proportional to the stopping potential so a bright light yields more photoelectrons because if i increase the brightness the number of electrons are increasing because the current is increasing so a bright light yields more photoelectrons than a dim one of the same frequency okay because I have, I have kept the frequency constant. So if I keep on increasing the brightness, the more photoelectrons are coming out of the same frequency, but the electron energy remains the same. Fine. So this is the second feature. The first feature, there was no delay. And the second is uh, the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons are independent of the light intensity. The third feature of the photoelectric effect is the maximum kinetic energy, which is the maximum kinetic energy which is proportional to, which is proportional to V naught uh, stopping potential of the photoelectrons. It depends on the frequency of the light. Kinetic energy, the feature two, what we have seen that the kinetic energy is independent of the light intensity, but on which it is depending, it is depending on the frequency of the light. Okay, so. Uh, and classically there should be no relationship between the frequency of the light and the electric kinetic energy classically uh, what we can think of that the frequency if there there will be no uh, relation between the frequency and the kinetic energy and the kinetic energy should be related to the intensity of the light okay we have seen in the feature 2 that kinetic energy should be should be dependent on the light intensity which experimentally is not true okay so you, you can see this in this figure that on the x-axis photo photo electron current is there and in this case what we have done is we fix the light intensity in the previous case what was there we have fixed the frequency and vary the intensity now we have uh, fixed the light intensity at the, the same brightness same brightness of uh, the light but I'm changing the frequency new one new two and new three changing the frequency means i am shining the different light on the metallic surface on the same surface i am shining a red light i am shining a blue light i am shining a yellow light okay so with the frequency ranging new one is new one frequency is more than new two and new three so you can see that if i changing if i intensity is constant then the current is constant you can see that current is constant for this frequency new one new two and new three the current is constant for the same frequency if i say this new one is red light new two is blue light new three is yellow light then the frequency is current is same for all these three light but what is different is the stopping potential the stopping potential is different for all the three potential so stopping potential is directly proportional to my maximum kinetic energy so this implies that if I change the frequency, then the kinetic energy of the elect photoelectrons which are coming from the metallic surface changes. The more, because new one is the greater frequency than new two and new three, the more the frequency, the more the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons which are coming. Okay, because the stopping potential is more than this and more than this. So now the maximum kinetic energy is depending on the frequency. If I keep on changing the frequency, the kinetic energy of the photoelectron changes, keeping the intensity constant. And what classically we think of, 
that this uh, kinetic energy should depend on the intensity and must not depend on the frequency but what experimental observation is that the kinetic energy is depending on the frequency as independent of the intensity so the third feature is also experimental observation we are not able to also explain on the classical understanding of the on the basis of the wave theory the fourth feature of uh, the photoelectric effect is the dependence of ejection of electron on the frequency of the light so in order to explain this let me explain this graph first that uh, this on the y-axis we have maximum photoelectron energy that means the energy maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron which are coming from the metallic surface on this axis we have a frequency the unit of the frequency is Hertz and these are three metals cesium sodium and calcium so what what is the explanation of this graph so if I if I keep on increasing the frequency okay you see uh, consider the cesium okay if we keep on increasing the frequency then there is no no electrons are coming out only at this frequency which is new naught the electrons have started to come out so that means if I if I for this cesium metal if I shine the light of all these frequencies so no electron will come out until and until I choose this frequency and then only the electrons are coming out from the cesium surface similarly if I choose the sodium metal similarly if I choose the sodium metal then what happens is if I keep on increasing the frequency no photoelectrons are coming only when I reaches to this frequency new naught then only the electrons have started to come out so this particular frequency new naught is known as the cutoff frequency it says that before this frequency no electron no photoelectron will come out from the cesium surface and before this frequency no electron will come out from the sodium surface no matter whatever the intensity but classically what we can think of the electron should be ejected at any frequency as long as the light intensity is high enough so classically we can think of the electron must get out from the surface when our light is falling on the surface but what is happening that it's not so easy that unless and until I shine a light of certain frequency for a certain metal then only the photoelectron will come out from that surface and that particular frequency is known as the cutoff frequency so no electrons are emitted if the incident light falls below some cutoff frequency so that means if, if I shine for example if I shine red light on this cesium surface may, may it may happen that no electrons will come out but if, if we shine a blue light on this surface then only the electron will come out fine so the cutoff frequency is the characteristic of the materials being illuminated so cutoff frequency is, 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 is the property of the particular material cutoff frequency is for cesium is this cut of frequency of sodium is something else cut of frequency is calcium is something else and the no electrons are ejected below the cut of frequency regardless of the intensity and above the cut of frequency the photoelectrons ranges in energy from zero to a maximum value that increases linearly with increasing the frequency which you you are seeing that if after this cut of frequency the emission of the photoelectron increases and it in increases linearly with the frequency if I keep on increasing the frequency the number of electron the emission of the number of electron which are coming from the metallic surface increases and it is linearly related with the frequency so this is the fourth feature of the photoelectric effect which also cannot be explained on the basis of the classical understanding of the wave
nature of electromagnetic radiation. Now uh, we know that all the experimental results contradicts our classical prediction about the photoelectric effect. So how to explain the experimental observation of the photoelectric effect? So in order to explain is we must understand the quantum theory of light. Okay. So the quantum comes from the quantization. So what do we mean by the quantization? We need to understand the origin of the quantization. And that is understood on the basis of like this pictorial representation that uh, if a particle is a vibrating particle, okay, so what will be the amount of energy this vibrating particle can have? Okay, if this is particle is vibrating, it's going to have a certain energy. So what will be the amount of energy? If I measure the amount of energy, so the understanding is that before Planck's, the particle could have any energy. That means it's a continuous. The particle could have energy 1, can have 1 by 2, can have 3 by 2, can have 2. Any sort of energy this particle can have. Any sort of energy. Okay, any sort of energy with this block. But after Planck's idea, then the energy is quantized. Energy is not like this. It's not continuous. It is quantized. It is quantized. So the, before Planck, the particle could have any energy. And after the Planck idea, the particle could have only a specific quantized energy. It can have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It cannot have half. It cannot have three by two. It can have one, two, three. It cannot have in between energy. One by two it cannot have. Okay. Half can have. Huh? Three by two. Cannot cannot have three by two energy. It can only have one, two, three, four. This is what we mean by quantization. It's not a continuous. It is quantized, discrete. The energy, the particle, this vibrating particle could have only a specific quantized energy. It's not that this vibrating particle can have energy half, three by two, seven by two. It can have only one amount of energy, five amount of energy, seven amount of energy. Okay, so this is what do we mean by the quantization of the energy? So this is the same diagram as last, except blown up to see the space space uh, better. So uh, so this is again the vibrating particle. Uh, so these are so energy levels. So this means that if a particle is in some energy, so if this if this, the, if this is vibrating particle, if this is vibrating. This particle is vibrating. So if during the vibration, if this particle is vibrating, this particle is vibrating, and during the vibration, and this particle is in this energy level, and then after some time, it comes to this energy level. So if the energy is light with energy equal to E1 minus E2 will be there. So the E1 has some energy, it has to be discrete, can have 5 amount of energy and this E2 will have 4 amount of energy. So 5 minus 4, 1 amount of energy will be given by this particle, okay, when it, it comes from this level to this level. So this means that if the particle is in some energy state, so in, in quantum mechanics, energy levels are known as energy state or the state of this vibrating particle is the quantum state. If it gives to energy in the form of light, it has to give up a definite amount of energy. So when this particle, it has to give the energy in terms of light. If this particle is coming from this state to this state, then it will give a light of energy and who, the energy of that light will be E1 minus E2. So you now what I wanted to make you understand that what is quantization means. That quantization means that that nothing can be continuous. It has to be discrete. 
and a specific quantized value okay so the quantum theory of light says that the light is quantized the energy of the light is quantized okay it has a discrete value and uh, Einstein shows that that he actually extended the Planck concept the earlier one is the Planck constant extended the Planck concept of quantization to the electromagnetic wave so what Einstein said that all electromagnetic radiation of frequency new so naturally the electromagnetic radiation is going to have frequency as well as wavelength so from any source can be considered a stream of quanta now called as photon okay so what Einstein said that the electromagnetic radiation is consist of a stream of quanta means a light is made up of a quanta which is known as a photon okay and each photon has an energy E equal to H nu where H is the Planck constant whose value is 6.626 to 1 minus 34 joule second and nu is the frequency of that electromagnetic radiation and that photon moves at the speed of light in vacuum so what Einstein said that the electromagnetic radiation of certain frequency nu is not a wave it is made of of a quanta and that quanta is known as a photon and each quanta of that electromagnetic radiation has going to have energy H nu and it moves with the speed of light in vacuum first thing and the second is uh, this that energy was not only given to electromagnetic wave in separate quanta but was also carried by the wave in separate quanta that means if I if I have electromagnetic radiation okay then the energy which uh, that electromagnetic radiation carries is in terms of the separate quanta and if that electromagnetic radiation interact with something and transfer its energy to that system then also is transferred in separate quanta okay so the energy was not only given to electromagnetic wave in separate quanta but was also carried by the waves in separate quanta so the first thing is that the electromagnetic radiation is made up of the stream of quantas and that quanta is known as the photons quanta is a plural word and quantum is one photon and quanta is a stream of uh, photons so now call the photons so electromagnetic radiations are made of uh, photons and each photon has energy e equal to each nu and the energy the absorption and emission of the energy when the electromagnetic radiation interact with something is carried or given in terms of the separate quanta that means an individual photon which is a constituent of the electromagnetic radiation will interact and transfer its energy or gain energy from the system in in terms of the quanta so the, then Einstein realized that the photoelectric effect the experimental observation of the photoelectric effect could be understood if the energy in light is not spread out over the wave front as I told you that if the electromagnetic radiation has a wave front and then the energy of the total energy of that electromagnetic radiation is spread out on this wave front each and every uh, is distributed on each and every point of this wave front so what is Einstein thought that that the energy in the light is not spread over the wave front but is concentrated in a small packets which he names as the photon so now told that the scenario is not like that so that the light is coming out and we have a photon it is made up of photon okay and each photon has energy equal to 
it's new so the energy of this and frequency of this light light beam is new so energy of this light beam will be h new and the each photon individual photon which is a constituent of this electromagnetic radiation is going to have the energy equal to h new so the energy of the photo uh, energy of uh, uh, the electromagnetic radiation is concentrated in a small packets of photon and not is distributed equally over each and every point of the wave front so this it is this is the wave nature of the electromagnetic radiation but what einstein thought that it's not the scenario is not like this it's actually the electromagnetic radiation is made up of energy bundles and these are called photons and the total energy of uh, the electromagnetic radiation is concentrated in each and every photon each and every energy bundle of th this quanta which is a photon h nu now on this basis quantum theory of electromagnetic light we can explain that uh, we can explain all those uh, experimental observation of the photoelectric effect which, which which we were not able to explain on the basis of the wave theory where we are seeing the wave as the energy of the wave is distributed all over the wave front now we can think in terms of the electromagnetic radiation or the light which is falling on the metallic surface is made up of a stream of quanta and each quanta has the same energy as the energy of the electromagnetic radiation and the energy is given or taken is in terms of the transfer of this quanta which is a photon fine so the first uh, feature that the no delay between the incident of light and ejection of photoelectrons which we are not able to explain on the basis of the classical understanding now why is that so can we explain this on the basis of the quantum theory of light yes because the now we know that electromagnetic wave energy is concentrated in photons and not spread out okay so now uh, uh, what do you think that the energy is not concentrated on the wave front it's concentrated on each and every photon so there should be no delay in the emission of the photon that means if if i have a metallic surface okay See if a light is falling and we have a wave front and the energy of this of no frequency if energy of this light is distributed all over this wave front and it comes over it is coming over this metallic surface okay so then the naturally there will be some time lag between uh, the absorption of the energy to a particular electron from this metal surface to come out but what happen when i have a metallic surface and a photon light electromagnetic radiation which is consisting of a photon of energy new and each photon has energy e is equal to h new equal to the same energy of the incident so when this elect photon particular photon comes and strike the electron it immediately transfers energy and then this electron comes out because the transfer of energy is also took place in terms of the exchange of the photon individual photon separate photon okay the energy is light is not spread out over the wave front but is concentrated in small packets or photons okay so it's like the total energy of the electromagnetic radiation is also equal to the energy of the individual photon it's not like this energy is distributed all equally on the wave front okay it's it's like this if i have a stone if i crush this stone and make a powder of this stone so if i throw this powder on some surface naturally in order to irradiate the surface this powder will take some time but if i if i make this powder a stone and if i throw this a stone the metallic surface then it will naturally almost instantly irradiate the surface 
okay the same theory is there very crude I, i'm telling you in a very crude language but it's the same thing is happening that the elect photon comes out and then almost instantly transfer its synergy to the electron and electron comes off instantaneously when the electromagnetic radiation strike the surface so on the quantum theory of light we can explain why there is no delay between the incident of light and the ejection ejection of the photoelectron the second experimental observation was that the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons are independent of the light intensity how how we can explain this on the basis of quantum theory of light so now we know that the electromagnetic radiation is made up of the photon the stream of quanta and in that theory increasing the intensity means increasing the number of photons not increasing the energy okay so the all photon of the frequency nu has the same energy okay so changing the intensity of a monochromatic light beam monochromatic means a light of the same frequency monochromatic light means a light which has the same frequency so all photons of the new frequency has the same energy so if if this uh, this uh, this is a monochromatic light of frequency new then the all photon which are which are constituents of this light is going to have the same energy equal to h new so changing the intensity of the monochromatic light beam will change the number of photoelectrons but not their energies okay so if i if i have a bright light more brighter light and it's more brighter light then what i am doing is i if i is intensity and 2i is and 3i is another intensity so the number of photoelectrons in this will be less than the number of photon in this light number of photon in this light okay so increasing the intensity increasing the brightness means i'm increasing the number of photons in the light not the energy because the energy depends upon the new e equal to h new so i have kept the frequency constant but i am increasing frequencies constant so frequency is constant means energy is constant but why i am increasing the intensity that means increasing the number of photons which are the constituents of this light so if i am increasing the number of photons naturally the number of photons which are coming on the surface are more so more photoelectron will come out so if the number of photons are reaching here is 5 so then 5 electrons will come out if a number of electron photo photon are coming on the surface is 10 then the more electron will come out if it's 15 more electron will come out and the more electron will come out there will be more current but because i'm not increasing uh, the energy energy is fixed therefore the electron which are coming with these bright these three brightness these three intensity are not going to have the different kinetic energy they are all going to have the same kinetic energy because the energy which is which are being incident on the surface is same for all these three brightness brightness means i am just increasing the number of photons not increasing the energy okay so now with this concept i can also can see that say that the kinetic energy of the photoelectron are independent of the light intensity because increasing the intensity is not meaning the increasing the energy is just the increasing the number of photon in the electromagnetic radiation the third thing is that the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron depends on the frequency of the light it's straightforward because uh, e equal to h nu if i change the frequency energy will change e1 e2 e2 h nu2 e3 h nu3 so if i change the frequency the energy will change and if the energy will change then the photoelectron which are coming due to this energy due to this energy due to this energy are naturally going to have a different kinetic energy so the kinetic energy will depend upon the frequency because what i know that the light which is incident on the metallic surface okay is made up of the photons 
and if I change the frequency the energy of the photon changes and then energy of the photon changes the electron which are coming because of the interaction of these photon to these photon to the electrons will be different naturally so on the basis of the quantum theory of light I can also explain the why the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron are depending on the frequency of the light Now, the a independence of ejection of electron on the light frequency. So, for this, uh, the Einstein gives the photoelectric effect equation, which says that H nu equal to kinetic energy maximum, maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron plus 5, where H nu is the photon energy, this photon energy of the electromagnetic radiation, which is falling on the metallic surface, and kinetic energy maximum is the maximum energy of the photoelectron which is proportional to the stopic potential you know this and phi is the h nu naught nu naught you already know is the cutoff frequency below which no photoelectrons comes out from the metallic surface so this is known as the work function of the metal see phi h nu is the energy which is known as the work function of the metal so the work function is the minimum energy needed for an electron to leave the metal so we can understand from this diagram that this is a metallic surface okay so before that every 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 uh, metal has its own work function okay like you see sodium has a work function of 2.3 electron volt so unless and until i shine a light of 2. Point, more than 2.3 electron volt then only uh, the electron will come out from the metallic surface you can see that this is if a photon this is some metal whose uh, work function is it's not it's new not is this if I shine a light whose whose energy is H new not that means the frequency of this light is new not if this light is falling on the metallic surface and the work function of this is surface is H new not okay so below this uh, frequency no electron will come out so if this light is having as energy this and it it falls on this surface so this electron this particular electron will acquire this much of energy and it will come out of the surface but the kinetic energy is zero because this this energy h nu which is falling on the surface is equal to the work function so the kinetic energy will be zero but if I have H nu, H nu photon of energy, this is falling on the surface and then electron comes out of the surface. So if this is more than this, because if this energy is less than this, then no electron will come out. If we equal to this, then electron will come out with zero kinetic energy and if this is more than this, then the rest of the energy H nu minus H nu naught will be the kinetic energy of the photoelectron so this is the photoelectric effect equation given by the Einstein and this on this explanation Einstein has been given the Nobel Prize so the electron ejected from the surface of the metal and not making collision with other metal atoms before escaping possess the maximum kinetic energy so what it says that that if 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 this light falls on this surface and this electron acquires this energy and it directly comes out because in this atom there will be more electrons and more atoms so after being free from one atom if this electron is not colliding with any other atom any another electron and directly it comes out of the surface then the maximum kinetic energy is going to have is this much so if if before if before coming out of the surface if you interact with some other atom or electron naturally it is going to lose some more energy and the maximum kinetic energy will be not equal to this okay so this is uh, the work function is the minimum energy needed for electron to leave the metal so the dependence of the ejection electron on the light frequency is also explained on the basis of the quantum theory of light that according to Einstein the photoelectric effect in a given metal should be the equation known as the photoelectric effect equation. 
So, uh, so there is a failure to observe photoelectric effect below a certain cutoff frequency, which we have already explained that before a cutoff frequency on this, we have a frequency. Before this cutoff frequency, we cannot observe the photoelectric effect. Okay, which indicates that the photon must have more energy than the work function in order to eject an electron. So we have seen that uh, we have seen that uh, the photon, this photon, must have enough energy, more than the energy of the work function. And if it's not so, then there will be no photoelectric effect. So I can write this uh, kinetic energy. This is kinetic energy is h nu minus phi. So I can write this uh, as uh, kinetic energy is equal to h nu minus phi, h phi is h nu naught, h nu minus nu naught. Okay, so a photon of higher frequencies carries more energy. Fine, a photon, photoelectron ejected with higher kinetic energy and there is a linear relationship between the kinetic energy and the frequency. This is kinetic energy and the frequency. Because h is a constant, so this is a kind of y equal to mx. So y is my kinetic energy and x is my nu minus nu naught and m is a constant which is and if I plot y is equal to mx you know this is a straight line and the slope of this straight line is what this is m. So the, the slope of each line is m is h. The slope of each line is h is the Planck constant. Okay, the x in intercept is the cutoff frequency. X intercept is the cutoff frequency, and this is the frequency below which no photoelectrons are. Uh, x is intercept is the cutoff frequency nu naught, and this is the frequency below which no photoelectrons are emitted. So. This is uh, what we know about the photoelectric effect, which can be explained on the basis of uh, uh, the quantum theory of light. So now we know there is uh, one simple arithmetic that in terms of electron volt, so because the photon has energy e equal to h nu for a photon energy. So I can write E equal to H, H value of H is 6.623 which is Planck constant into 2 to the minus 34 joule second. Okay. And nu is there. And if I if I have to change uh, this joule second in terms of the electron volt, then then I have to divide it with 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule. Because 1 joule is this much of electron volt. 1 joule is equal to 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 electron volt. So if I divide this, you will get new electron volt seconds. Okay, so the photon, if if we are given instead of the wavelength of the light, so if not, so we know the frequency is equal to C lambda, because C is equal to new lambda. So this lambda is the wavelength and the frequency new equal to C lambda. We can write in place of new, we can write C and we can put the value of c is with the velocity of light 3 into 10 to power 8 meter per second so if i put the value of nu equal to c and then lambda in the denominator so you can write 4.123 in 10 to power minus 15 electron volt 3 into 10 to power 8 meter per second and if I divide multiply it we have 1.240 so this is very important relation in that photon energy in electron volt Okay, is 1.240 into 10 to the power minus 6 electron volt meter per lambda if you must know that how to calculate the electron energy if the wavelength is given. So uh, with the cutoff frequency is related to the work function because nu naught is the cutoff frequency because phi is equal to h nu naught. So therefore we can have also a cutoff wavelength because c is equal to nu lambda. So cutoff frequency and then we have a cutoff wavelength. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a little example that uh, you must do that. The ultraviolet light of wavelength, 350 nanometer. Okay, so we have a wavelength 
this is 350 nanometer so this is 350 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter nano means minus 9 meter an intensity of 1 watt per meter square is directed at a potassium surface so we have a surface a potassium surface on which an electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 350 nanometer is being incident so we have to find the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron forget about this maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron so if this light is falling on this surface so the electron which is being ejected from this surface we have to find what is the maximum kinetic energy of this surface okay so now directly they have used uh, the photoelectric equation because photoelectric equation is s nu equal to kinetic energy maximum plus phi the work function okay so the kinetic energy maximum will be h nu minus phi okay so phi is must be given phi is the work function will be given is 2.2 electron volt so phi i know is 2.2 2 electron volt so i have to find what is the h nu the energy energy of the photon of wavelength is given lambda so now we can use this uh, this relation if the wavelength is given what will be the energy of the photon okay so you can see that e is 1.240 into the minus 6 1.240 into the minus 6 electron volt meter and then we have to put the value of lambda putting the value of lambda 350 into 10 to the minus 9 meter nanometer minus 9 meter if i divide this this comes out to be 3.5 electron volt so nanometer nano will cancel meter meter will cancel out we have 3.5 electron volt so this is 3.5 electron volts so put 3.5 electron volts minus the work function 2.2 electron volt so 1.3 electron volt so this if i shine a photon of wavelength this 350 nanometer on a potassium surface whose work function is 2.2 electron volt then the electron which will come out during the photoelectric effect will be having a maximum kinetic energy of 1.3 electron volt fine